In today's Infinite Galaxy video, I've got 10 tips to level up your gameplay. So stick around and see how many of these you knew and how many were new. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Infinite Galaxy, and I want to give you 10 crucial tips. They're quick, they're easy, they're fast to level up your gameplay in Infinite Galaxy. Now, many of these you may already know, but if I nail just a couple that you hadn't already seen, then hopefully that has leveled up your gameplay, and keep score down below in the comments how many of these did you know, and how many of these were new for you. Now, tip number one is to use a bunch of different crew setups and presets. How many crew presets do I think you need? Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five different presets. Now, okay, you can combine some of these ideas into a single preset potentially, but here are the five things you need to optimize for with your crew. The first of those things is a wartime crew, baby. To have all crew members that give you wartime benefits, this is where the majority of your crew experience should be going. The next crew you want to have is a logistics crew so you can gather more resources and repair your warships at a cheaper price and for less time. The next crew you want to build is a warship recruiting crew. The key commanders for this, by the way, are going to be Karen, who gives you a higher uh, capacity at your dock. Also, you'll be looking at this dude right over here, LeBlanc, who gives you some more warship building speed. You get the idea. There are tons of crew members that give you warship building speed, expand your dock, smash them all into one crew, and use them whenever you're training new warships. In addition, I have combined my fourth crew into this one over here, and that is a research-based crew setup. I've got one commander that helps me out with that one crew member, and that is uh, this dude right over here, Kobiakawa. And I've got a max level research expert, 15.2%. Hey, it ain't bad. It's free. I jammed him into this crew. Technically, if you didn't have your Laura already deployed as a captain of a warship, she might be in here as well. And the fifth crew that you should have, for me, it's preset number four, because I combined two together earlier, as I was just describing, is a construction-based uh, crew. And really, there's two commanders you need to know about here. Oliviera Cudro, who's giving you a reduction in the construction time. And then also... There's one other who I actually have deployed as a captain right now, so I can't actually use him. I'll show you where he is in the crew over here in just a second. You set up these five different crew setups. Here he is. Ashlam Rich, this dude. Wait a minute. Here he is. Crew info. Yes. Construction speed. There it is. So set up those crews. Use the presets. I go through those every day. Let's get to the next tip which is just straight to value town. And this is to very simply spend your energy every single day. And you may be saying, thinking, just go, okay, well, isn't it obvious I should spend my energy? When you're battling higher level pirates, you're talking about three materials per pirate that you take down, which is pretty freaking sick. Or even better, anytime there are deep space relics to rally, you should always be spending your energy rallying these deep space relics if you've got the time to go and do it. What do you get from rallying relics? Oh... I don't know, say about a million resources? For 300 energy, you get a million resources, a bunch of speed ups, a bunch of flagship ex uh, experience. You get outfitting, crate. I mean, you get so much stuff, a million resources, yes. The trick here is to not overstuff your rallies. You put too many people into a rally, the percentage of damage you deal gets really low. You want to rally tons of relics as an alliance so that you get more of these alliance chests. So not only are the rewards really good, but look at all this stuff that we are getting in addition to the treaty chest, which you get periodically when enough uh, of the chests have been accumulated and rewards accumulate. So I would strongly recommend that you rally these deep space relics and constantly spend down your energy every single day. Now, on the topic of resources and how you're just going to need tons of them and tons of them and tons of them, I still need resources. I got to switch back to my logistics crew over here. Okay, get back to that gathering. But one thing I leave my core module on 24-7, and I basically never swap off of this, is a gathering-oriented core module build. I'm all in on gathering core module. Completely in. The other way that you could do this is to have many farms. 
those farms you use as resource feeders to your main. And then you could have a wartime build on your main. But honestly, you probably still need resources. So I would put gathering everywhere. <laughs> Gather a ton. Once you get your T10s, which like, I don't know, I'm like half a year plus into the game. I still don't have them, right? But once you get there, then you switch over to a wartime build, which is going to be a weapon build that you use the majority of the time. The next tip that I've got for you is to make sure that your outfitting is matching the type of flagship that you're using and the warship that goes with it. So as a very quick example here, I'm using T9 frigates. Those do missile damage. I've invested in outfitting that does missile damage. In addition, when I upgrade to T10, man, the freaking frigates are going to do kinetic damage. So I also have a set of outfitting that is good for kinetic damage. So just keep in mind, you want to focus your outfitting in primarily a couple, one or two really good sets for your very best flagship pair. That way you get the most punch you possibly can. How big of a deal is this? I mean, geez, even just having one more outfitting slot over here, if I had another level nine weapon, I would have another 17% attack. That's kind of a big deal, you know? Uh, if we switch from like a, a blue to a purple, we're talking about like a 7% boost in attack from what I was doing. All that to say, focusing your outfitting on whatever your main flagship combo is doing is probably a really solid plan. And if you're looking for the exact most efficient way to do those upgrades, I'll have a card up in the top where I covered the exact breakdown of how to spend your materials in the most efficient way possible. Now, if you are spending money in the game, one thing to keep in mind is that your VIP level is gonna give you a really huge advantage over time. I mean, when I make it to VIP 12, I'm getting 720 Federation Advance credits. Today, I am getting 480 Federation Advance credits every single day. Well, yes. The upgrade to 720 is really, really, really good, okay? And VIP at whatever level you're at, upgrading to the next one is generally pretty good. So if you are spending in the game, one thing to keep in mind is that the regular packs generally have way more VIP. And so you buy these sorts of packs, even though they're lower value, just to get the VIP sometimes. And over time, that will give you a lot of value. So if you're the kind of player who sticks with the game for a long period of time, just something to consider. You don't have to spend in the game if you don't want to. I'm just pointing out that if you want to get VIP, that's the place to do it. And VIP gives you value over time. On the topic of value over time, you should be max donating to your Alliance technology every single day. Not only is your Alliance technology absolutely freaking crucial, giving you huge amounts of stats. I mean, look at this. Just this one thing is frigate hit points of 14%. Yes, please. Hello, baby. But once you go and you do these investments, not only are you getting credit, for your season pass, which I'm going to talk about in just a bit. Not only are you getting um, your Alliance tech boosted up here, but you're also getting something for yourself. You can go to the Alliance shop. It's going to give you some extra of these reserves or Alliance honor rather. And you can spend honor for things that you really want. What are things that I typically hunt for? I generally get materials, legendary blueprints, and also these revitalizers are freaking crucial. The next tip, since we're talking about alliances, is to make sure you're in the right alliance. Look, it's easy to get sort of bogged down in an alliance that's not playing the game at the same level as you. So just consider switching to an alliance that is as aggressive in playing the game as you are. Hunting for value and doing all the things like rallying those relics that you would want to participate in. Activity is freaking crucial, okay? Now this next tip goes back to construction. And if you are constructing things in your spaceport, one thing I want to encourage you to do, besides using a construction crew, is to actually check for milestone upgrades. So this outfitting center, I have left at level 27. And that is because I really don't get anything much by going to level 28. I get 1% faster outfitting construction. I don't care. Going to 29, I still don't care. Only at level 30 do I get something interesting, which is increasing the level of my flagship outfitting. That is why I would encourage you to look for the milestone upgrades. Another building that has really obvious milestone upgrades that I encouraged in my very first tip video for everybody to be thinking about is the military dock because you get additional cues to train up warships, baby. This is freaking huge. This little one for shipbuilding queue is huge. Uh, right now, it's only level 20 to get the maximum number of cues for building warships. Yes, you need these. I run out of warships nearly in a tough battle in the Galaxy Summit. You're gonna want more of these. 
absolutely crucial. I think they're going to be crucial for server versus server, which is on its way at some point. But just keep your eye on these milestone upgrades and when necessary, do a bunch of upgrades of a certain type of building in here to get the thing that you actually want or don't spend anything on it because you don't actually need what's there. And trust me, there's plenty of other places to spend those resources. Now, if you're looking for a little bit of value on the season pass, which I was talking about earlier, this is the next tip. It's easy to forget that you have a daily mission. If you buy something from the campaign shop, anything from the campaign shop, you get 25 season mission points. You also, if you put like five experience onto a flagship with a core, you get 20 season mission points. If you use five experience on a crew member, you get 20 season mission points. I do those things every single day. And like, yes, uh, 65 points times 30 days or however long the season is, is kind of a big deal. <laughs> so consider doing those things every single day to get your incremental value in your season pass because free value is still free value. And finally, on the topic of free value, it's easy to forget that there is actually one more thing over here, and that is your reclaim shop. Don't lose sight of the reclaim shop, even though it's off the screen. You can reclaim your green crew members. You probably don't need more of them once you get to the mid to late game. Uh, and you can trade that in for stuff that you're way more interested in, including some of these epics like, ooh, Helen is actually a really solid crew member. Just be careful. There is a max level for your crew members, specifically a max upgrade level. So you don't want to actually hit that upgrade level because then any one of those epic uh, crew members you're getting at that point, I mean, you're just reclaiming them, which is better than nothing, but not as high value as just getting the upgrade in the first place. So there's certainly a balance here of rushing a crew member up. Uh, but I'm really talking about spender problems at this point. For most people, just reclaim your greens, trade it into a purple you're really interested in. I haven't gotten a legendary in my reclaim shop in, I don't think, ever. I know that it can happen, but I haven't gotten that lucky. So, eh, I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm hanging on to my credits for now for something. For what? I don't know. I guess we'll see. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here and consider subscribing for Infinite Galaxy videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. There was 10 tips. And if there were any that I think things I didn't mention, but really should have included, leave those in the comments and also leave a comment with the number of things that you knew from these 10. Was there anything that you weren't doing that maybe you'll start doing? How many of these tips were new? Let me know. And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.